from Phoenix. I am all loaded up here, heading up to Colorado for the Hard Rock 100. I just stopped off at my local run store. We got the runner's den here in Phoenix. I was getting some nutrition. So I've got some, some run gum. I picked up some Honey Stinger Performance Chews. Honey Stinger Energy Chews. Let's see what else we got here. And we got a bunch of shot blocks. I will probably supplement and get a few more things that didn't have everything I wanted. So I might try and pick up some spring energy somewhere along the way and then probably some goos at the expo for Hard Rock. So anyways, here we go. We are heading on up. Today is Friday. Tomorrow we have our Silverton Alpine Marathon and 50K and then we'll have the Kendall Mountain Run on Sunday. All right, greetings from Camp Verde. Little update here, I'm stopping a couple hours into my journey to get my training run in for today. I've got four miles on the calendar. Figure I would get it done before uh, I lose daylight here. And a little update on what's been going on with me. Um, I was originally, I think, sixth on the Hard Rock wait list when they drew names last December. And just found out 13 days prior to race day that I got in, I got the call from Dale Garland. And so I've been doing some last minute training. My training has been a little bit up and down the last few months. So anywhere from 40 to, I had a 90 mile week filming at Cocodona. And then I've had some low mileage weeks as well thrown in there. So uh, fortunately I've kind of gotten some good runs in. I think this is my 10th day in a row of running once I get this one done. And this week, if I get all my runs done, I have an 18 miler scheduled for tomorrow, which I will do in the afternoon after the Silverton Alpine Marathon. And then on Sunday, I have a three mile run and I think I'll hit around 50 miles this week. And then we'll have about, what, four days of easy running or off days uh, before we start Hard Rock on Friday. So. I'm going to be hopefully posting videos every day up until the race, give you guys some insights into the Hard Rock 100, what goes on during Camp Hard Rock behind the scenes. We're going to try and get those out as soon as we can each day. So hopefully you guys will come along uh, and check that out. But that is the update from me. Uh, we'll be talking more about Hard Rock soon, but the interesting thing for me about Hard Rock this year is this will be my sixth attempt. So I have five starts, I have five finishes, and they've all been in the counterclockwise direction, which is the odd years. And I've never been able to get in for a clockwise run. So this year is the clockwise run. This is my chance to be considered what they say, a true hard rocker. They say you're not a true hard rocker until you finish it both directions. They do switch directions every year for this race. It's something that's kind of unique about it. So. It is hot out here in Camp Birdie. I am showing 106 degrees out right now. So maybe not the best idea, um, but I'm pretty well heat trained. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this, uh, I think it's like a 3.9 mile loop here. I've never run this little trail system before. It's just a single loop apparently. Um, I do see a map over there, so we'll go check it out. I'll let you guys know the name of this place, how to get to it. Let's go do it. Definitely going to fill up a water bottle today. I was able to get up to Flagstaff last Sunday for a 13 mile run with over 4,000 feet of gain. That is my only run at altitude in the last couple months. Got up to 9,000 feet a couple times. So the altitude I think is going to be a bit of a shocker for my system. But I will have about a week up there to try and acclimate. So I brought multiple shoes up to Hard Rock this year. I will go through all of them uh, in another video coming up where I'll talk about all my gear. Um, but today I'm rocking a kind of a prototype of a shoe that will be coming out soon. It is called the S-Lab Genesis. This is what it looks like. So it's got, um, if you can see, decent amount of grip. Mine's worn down a little bit. I've been running in these, but it should be plenty if I do decide to put these on during the race. Um, they are kind of built upon the, the Ultra Glide type of foam here. It does have some posting in here for a little more stability on the side. They also have some posting back here. And 
it's got a nice sock-like fit. So kind of not too dissimilar from, I think the S-Lab Ultra shoe that Francois is always wearing. So I wish I knew more about this shoe, but I think it's uh, still like a little bit limited in information at this point. All right, let's see here. Oh yeah, this is the Copper Canyon Trailhead, they call it. Part of the Verde Ranger District of the Prescott National Forest. And we are right down here. And we're gonna be doing this Copper Falls Trail Loop, non-motorized. Ooh, it looks like there is a motorized, some sort of a motorized trail that connects this to a bunch of other areas. So that is pretty cool. There's also the General Crook Trail in this area. Let's see over here, the General Crook goes under the I-17, connects in with this Copper Falls. And this is uh, Camp Verde right here, part of the Verde Valley. So we will uh, go find this trailhead here. <sighs> okay, so I don't know the name of this trail, but this looks to be the motorized one that connects this trail system with a bunch of other areas. You can see over here that it looks like ATVs, e-bikes, and motorcycles are allowed in addition to non-motorized traffic, but side-by-sides are not. So you could come out here with a dirt bike um, and an ATV. So it looks like I'll have to be coming out and exploring this area some more in the future. And that must mean that our loop starts over here at this smaller trailhead where there's more limited access. All right, found the trail here. Nice little bit of single track. And from the looks of it, we're gonna be doing some switchbacks up this hill here. The whole loop is supposed to have 450 feet of climb in 3.9 miles. Climbing our way up, some thicker vegetation already. Kind of cool. Now, my question to all of you out there is, how much does heat training translate to altitude success? Because that's all I got going for me right now. I think I'm decently heat adapted. I'm out here in 106 and it honestly feels pretty nice. I probably sound like I'm breathing hard though. But from what I've heard is, is heat training can, can be somewhat of a substitute. Obviously not, not all the way. We'll see. I like to use trail forks for finding these sorts of gems out there. As you can see, I am at that blue dot on the loop and that blue dot on the elevation profile. So we've got a little bit of a dip down and then one more short climb and we'll be switch backing down and back into the trailhead here in a little bit. All right, just topped out in the first part of this climb here. Woo, check out this view. Wow, that's awesome. I'm not sure yet if we go down that, but it does look like there's a trail. And we're right on the edge of this cliff. You can see across the way is the I-17 freeway. That's in between Phoenix and Flagstaff. Man, I am so happy I stopped here. This is really cool. Look at that. That down there is awesome. And we're gonna be descending down a little bit here. I'll tell you what, I am digging these shoes. They feel pretty stable. Lots of grip, great support, really good cushioning. You just kind of bomb, bomb these downs. Might have to uh, use them in the arsenal for hard rock, we'll see. And in the distance there, you can see some of the rocks of Sedona and the peaks behind them way in the distance. All right, I came down through one switchback back there, about a mile and a half into the loop. Some of these junipers over here are Big enough to provide a bit of shade. OK, 
Okay, we're now over by that edge of that downhill we saw earlier. We came from up there, looking across the way, and we'll see if we actually drop into this thing or not. Right now we seem to be going just right along the edge. All right, so not dropping in over here. Okay, we might in fact have a drop off trail here. Yep. So looks unofficial, but some people, looks like they drop into that one. We'll stay on the official loop. And we are just about two miles in right now. All right, I am feeling it now. This looks like the drop off point. Look at that. Beautiful views. Let's go for it. Gotta love that shade, baby. Woo! All right, we're 2.6 miles in. I've already lost, I think, most of the elevation we're going to. It'll probably be slightly downhill back, but up here it's looking really green and vibrant. So I'm thinking possible there's a water source or at least something underneath. You can see down there some kind of maybe oak, oak trees or sycamore trees or something. And I think that's where we'll be headed now. We have pine trees over here. Sweet. I mean, when we started, it was pretty much all desert. Here we are, a couple miles in. You got pine trees. You got junipers. And probably a creek that when it rains a fair bit, it actually will flow. All right, coming up on 3.4 miles. And check out this giant tank. I can get up on top of it here. Huh. Interesting. All right, so while I have you here, I can talk about my upcoming week. <clears throat> Gonna finish the drive up to Silverton tonight, just in time for the Saturday morning start of the Silverton Alpine Marathon and 50K. This is a race that we took over uh, I helped to resurrect it in, I think, 2009, right after I got started with Aravipa with my good friend Roger Rublick. The event was started by Emily Bear, who was a hard rocker. She lived in Silverton and wanted a marathon distance to add to the summer running events in town, like Kendall Mountain Run and like the Hard Rock. So the event has now grown and blown up. We have I think 400 participants this year between the 50K marathon and eight miler. So really great to see uh, the awesome turnout. And tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a little bit of photography, a little bit of race filming along with uh, Dylan Harris and Tony Hill. We'll try and get uh, my experience out there to you guys uh, to in tomorrow's video. And then Sunday is gonna be the Kendall Mountain Run. I'm gonna be in town doing photography and videography again. And I think this is like the, about the 45th running of the race. Uh, historic, historic event. And then we've got Monday through Thursday will be hard rock activities. I might try and head over to Telluride and see my brother, catch up with him before we both tow the line together on Friday. Uh, the rest of the days we'll be setting up for the hard rock finish line, the expo, checking in, prepping all my gear. I'll be sure to do a video about my nutrition plan, my gear plan, so you guys can see what all it takes to carry and to, to run the hard rock. Um, be packing my drop bags, etc. go over my, my race plan with my coach maybe. And then Friday morning, 6 a.m., clockwise direction, finally, we'll be running the hard rock and it's gonna be kind of a trippy thing. I'm like so used to doing it the counterclockwise direction. It's gonna be a nice change of pace. 
be heading straight towards Telluride in the morning, early afternoon, then down into Ure and so on and so forth. There are a couple changes to the Hard Rock course this year, I should mention. They had a couple of trail closures in the Pole Creek area, so that's a minor reroute. And then the big one is they moved the Grouse Gulch Aid Station. It's now called Animus Forks. It adds about a mile to the route. And what can you do? I think it's about 1.8 miles further than it was last time they did this direction. So that's the update. I'm gonna finish this run off. Uh, we'll get to four miles here and uh, then I'm gonna have to hydrate up because I know that uh, one little bottle is not enough for what I've been losing out here in this heat. All right, we got a little trail junction here. Let's see if I can find out which way to go. We're of course on the Copper Canyon Loop. We're super close to the end. It looks like we've got the 545 trail here. That is, I believe, the motorized route. And I guess what we were just on was also motorized. This one says OHV boundary and I believe this should be our trail. Yes, it is. And this creek looks like it gets some solid water. Got some good erosion here. All right, here we are. We're back. And we're gonna be pretty much right at four miles once we go through this gate up here. Might need a cold drink after this one. And that's a wrap. Just driving past Flagstaff right now. Probably gonna end this video for today. I don't think it's gonna be too interesting driving at night, um, but I am looking at a beautiful sunset here. Hopefully all you guys are well out there. And this is the uh, section up here, the pipeline fire that came through Flagstaff uh, not too long ago, just uh, a few weeks ago. So I'm gonna check out some of this damage see over here the, the peaks. It burned right over the San Francisco peaks that you can see there. All right, thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you tomorrow for Silverton Alpine Marathon.